Just join hands. Just join hands. Just join hands. Across the aisle. Across the aisle. Just join hands. Just join hands. Our Father, it is in the name of your Son, Jesus. Everything we do, everything we are, everything we hope to become is in Jesus. We just lavish our love and our worship on the name of Jesus. Jesus, what you did for us was so amazing. So much more than what we have been able to comprehend in this life. What you continue to do as the high priest of your church, as you sit in heaven and direct the affairs of the church at large, we thank you so much. Father, I thank you that you allowed Jesus to come to be our sacrifice. In our place, he died. Should have been us. Should have been the hand that I'm holding. That person should have died. I should have died. But you said no. Jesus, thank you for that. I can't, I can't overemphasize to you how much this morning. I just sense that in my heart so deeply. Without you, this life is most miserable indeed. So Father, I pray for the hand. Male, female, young, old, don't need to know all of their business. I just pray for them. I pray because I know that if it had not been for your grace in my life, where would I be? So why would I look down on my brother and my sister? No matter the struggle, no matter the obstacles that they face. As has been said here today, they are more than conquerors. Yeah. Not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, who loves us. Uh, and you gave your life for us to show it. We thank you for it. We thank you for your presence this evening, this morning. We give you praise. If you agree with that, why don't you just say amen. Yeah. Smile a little big at somebody and tell them I'm glad you're here this morning. Praise God. Well, I'm delighted that each one of you are here and we are a church that makes noise, so it's okay. I hear people saying shush, but I'd rather you be talking and not saying nothing. Amen? Amen. I certainly want to welcome our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in with us. We are LifePoint Christian Faith Center, located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Corbel, Iowa. Our temporary home is at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. We have a wonderful place where you can come, sit, fellowship, eat, drink, do whatever it is you want to do. Come on down if you're in a, a local area. We'd love to have you. If you're just tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. Get something to write with. Take some good notes and we'll be sure to not waste your time and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Would you welcome our YouTube audience? Ladies and gentlemen. I just want to look and see if I see any first time guests. Amen. Good to see everybody I know. How about that? And one of our longtime friends we haven't seen in a while, Delaney is back. Certainly glad she's here. And for those of you that have been traveling, welcome back. We're certainly glad you're back. For those that are yet to travel, uh, you know, we just are, will continue to believe God with you for all good things. This is a season of love and joy, but then all of them really are. But somehow or another, we seem to think that this one is a greater than others. And maybe it's because we give more uh, tangible material things. I don't know. But I know that God gave us something very unique and special during this season, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he is the Christ of God. He is the anointed Lamb of God. Amen. So I'm delighted that you're here. I want to, um, before I turn to the Word and get going here, I want to point out to you that uh, this handout is in the back. And as I listen to Pastor Lynette talk about the tithe, um, this is something that we have um, revamped. I needed to revamp it at the direction of the Holy Spirit. And they're free to you. They're just back there. Just uh, This is what we believe. This is what LifePoint believes. Maybe you are a person not sure about some things. I won't read through all of them. But, for example, we believe in uh, the Trinity. I'm just trying to pick some. We believe in the bodily resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, these things are important. It has down here the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And 
uh, all believers have dominion over sin, Satan, and self. Amen? Yes. You don't need an exorcist. You just need to get born again. Amen, Amen somebody. We also believe that all believers should walk in holiness and purity. Say amen, somebody. Amen. We believe in the promise of prosperity and so on. Uh, tithing. Here, it's listed here, sacred tithe and, and um, all of these things that we have. It's, it's, it's amazing to me that somehow or another, as I was listening to my wife talking about the various things that uh, people will say about tithing. And... Uh, Sadly, sadly, they won't say it about the bank. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When they go get a loan, right. they won't right. say, uh, you know, well, what are you going to do with my money? Most people don't even ask when they open a checking account, what are you going to do with my money? Right. Yeah. That's true. You know, when, you, when you take time to invest in stocks, your portfolio, you'll check on it, but you don't check on it as much as you should. But you try, try to bring that same amount to the church and see how people change. Right. Amen. Amen. Maybe I guess I'll miss something. I'm just saying that the attitude of the age should not dictate what you and I do. That's right. That's right. I could say the same thing about healing. There's churches that don't believe in healing, but what yet when you get sick, you want somebody to come pray for you. And somebody contacted me a couple weeks ago, and I don't mean to be rude, but they asked me, um, I've got to get to be careful here, but they asked me something specific. And I, I wanted to say, call your pastor. Okay. Why are you calling me? <laughs> that would be rude. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, you know, if you're going to believe something, you need to know what you believe. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Belief is not convenient, it's commitment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I better stop right there. Before I totally tune you out. Glory to God. Turn with me to the book of Galatians, please. Galatians. And just hold your place there, Galatians 5. Can I have uh, 45 minutes on the clock, please? 45 minutes on the clock. Mm. That's going to run me a little late. <laughs> Y'all got 45 minutes? What's that? Galatians, I didn't tell you what chapter, most of you should know, but did I say five? Yeah. Okay. I know that, but I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm gonna have fun with you. If I'm not gonna have fun, I'm not gonna do this no more. It, it is it is amazing to me. It is amazing to me that Everything we do in the context of Christianity, of the Holy Spirit, we do from a standpoint of learned activity for the most part. Most of us don't really put conscious thought into what we do when it comes to doing things for God. We really don't. We say we do, but we really don't. Because like anything, as humans, we learn to live life based on experiences that I started to say challenges, I'm trying to get a better word, that we've been taught. Yeah. For example, if I take, this is not a, the best example, but I'll use this. Can I, have, can I borrow your cup? I'm not going to touch the rim. I'll let you do that because I'm going to give it back to you. This cup represents Dave Bell's life and, and problems. Right? If this represents his life, and then we have a, another cup, or in this case, this is yours. How many of you know, I don't care how good this looks, or bad this looks to Dave, or how good your problems are, or how bad your problems are, you will always pick your problems over anybody else's. Yes. Both of these are water. Which one are you going to drink? The one that either you're, in this case, it hasn't been open. I'm not drinking behind him. How many of y'all going to drink behind him other than her? Maybe. maybe. You notice I said maybe. I don't drink behind my wife. 
she don't drink behind me. We both have our own set of problems and challenges, but she, my, my problems and challenges are unique to me. Yes. Listen to it. Holy Spirit going to take it somewhere. The main reason why we live life the way we do is because we have been conditioned by this life to learn how to overcome the various challenges that we face. Listen, listen, listen. If, if I lived in a third world country, we throw that around a lot, but I'll, I'll pick on the Philippines because I, I lived in the Philippines for quite some time, my wife and I. I learned that in the Philippines, there's things that you have to do because you are in a different climate and location. And some of the things that I learned, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be honest now, I'm not gonna be, I'm not being sarcastic or critical, but I'm being honest. When we were at uh, Clark Air Base, Clark Air Base at the time was the largest American air base in, in, in the world. And uh, around the perimeter of the base, there was a wall. I don't know how tall it was, pretty tall. You couldn't just, you couldn't just jump that thing. I mean, you had to, and it was concrete designed so that there was no, there was no steps on it. You know, you couldn't climb it. You're not gonna just jump over it, okay? But at the top of the wall, when I got there, I saw something that I'd never seen before in the places that I'd lived in the United States. There was little pieces of glass and spikes embedded around the top of the wall. Okay? And, and I thought it was odd, you know, I, I, I've never lived in a high crime area. And to be very honest with you, the Philippines, uh, there in, in, in um, what was the name of the place we were at? Um, Angeles City, was not a high crime area. Not for the base. And what happened was people would try, they build their homes against the walls, right? Little shanties, little shacks. And then some of them had enough sense that if they built a couple stories up on the wall, they could get over the wall. So it was not uncommon for people to jump over the wall. It's a common thing. Uh, you've never seen anybody run so fast in flip-flops <laughs> as somebody who was running from the security police on the base. And I said, I'm not being critical, I'm being honest. I mean, flip-flop not coming off. Seriously, because the flip-flop was too valuable to the person. It was part of how they learned to survive. So, that being said, if I'm in the Philippines, because I'm using this as illustration, I, it, is, it is wrong for me to be critical of how they live when they have adapted to where they are without their own ability to choose where they are. Mm. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. I kind of went a long way around that, but I'm trying to, trying to draw you a picture here. In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is wrong for me to judge anybody where they are when I have not had to go through the same steps of life that they've had to go through to get where Come on, they are. Come on. If, 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 if you are living beneath the design of God, listen, based on what I think, then that's up to you. <laughs> if, I, if I find out from examination of the word of God that God has a plan for me that exceeds where you are right now in your life don't get jealous or mad at me because I live better than you think that I should mm. or maybe I'm living better by perception than you are come on if I've learned that God is a healer and he, he does not he does not God it's just coming to me so please help me out here God. He, he is no respecter of persons when it comes to his blessing those people that walk at a high level of understanding and blessing from God did not get there on their own they got there 
because there was a force. I'm going to say it this way so y'all understand what I'm saying. A power working in them that did not did not come to them because they were so cute and, and, and educated and physically fit. His name is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Holy Spirit's one motivation is to minister Jesus Christ to you and I. There is no, God help me, he does not come to give me goosebumps. He, listen, he does not come for me to speak in tongues. And give me any amens on that one. The speaking in other tongues is a byproduct, an extension of who he is to make my living in this life more profitable to me. So if you choose not to speak in other tongues, then that's your choice. But when things don't flow in your life like you believe they should, you have to examine what part are you leaving on the table. Is this making sense? Yes. Now, turn to uh, verse 22. Galatians 5. Thank you, Father. I'm going to read this from a couple different translations, at least one, maybe two, but at least one. Um, K. James, we're very familiar with, most of us, those of us that have K. James embedded in us, ingrained in us. Right? Yeah. Um, and we've talked about this at length, so, but I, I, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to keep going, but I want to read this so I can at least say that I've read the scripture and y'all would call me a heretic. Um, but the fruit of the Spirit, this is where we left off last week, according to Elder Janice, right? <laughs> is love. Right? Yes. Joy. Yes. Peace. Yes. Long suffering. Well. Gentleness. Uh -huh. Goodness. Well. Faith. Mm -hmm. Meekness. Mm -hmm. Temperance. And it says, verse 23, against such. There is no law. I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. Is that all right? Yes. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things. And then, how about that? A sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in, listen, loyal commitments. Not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism, this is verse 23 for those of you that are. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, or other, in other words, crucified. Look up at me. So in my opening statement, I said to you that many of us go about our life as believers without consciously realizing the magnitude of who we really are. If we can't, and I believe this, this is, you know, you don't have to believe what I believe, I'm just telling you what I believe. I believe that the reason why the church has been so powerless, impotent, lifeless, uh, unappealing, whatever you want to use as adjective, because we have not realized how valuable the fruit of the Spirit is in our lives. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest, y'all ain't, ain't going to say the truth. Say, say amen when it, when, it, when it don't fit your, your particular category. But, uh, um, <laughs> man, 35 years, no fun. Um, I don't always walk around 
sensing love. As a matter of fact, they hear her tell it. <laughs> when, we on a, when I'm driving, and somebody in front of me don't know where they're going, there's probably less manifestation of love <laughs> on a continual basis. Ain't much peace going on. Long suffering, y'all laughing, as y'all know. Long suffering has going out the window. Would you please turn, move, something? Get out here and, and listen, I'm talking, I'm talking to believers now. The world ain't got none of this. That's why they get into road rage. At least, at least I know this much. Ain't never gonna be somebody that makes me so mad behind the wheel that I'm gonna get out and wanna hurt. Because if if that shows up in my life, then 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 I am not Christ. Now now let me say this carefully because I, I don't want you I don't want you getting off saying I said something I didn't say. But but what what I've done now I still belong to Christ. But see I have allowed myself to step out of Christ and back into legalism. And the flesh wants what it wants. <laughs> we said that last week, right? The flesh never gets enough. No, right. Most most people, before we come into the reality of Christianity, our flesh literally goes wild. That's why people do what they do. Don't look at them and say, why are they doing that? Because they ain't born again. That's right. That's right. Obey their mind. <laughs> okay. I am... Let, let, let's turn... Let's, no, I don't, I don't, I don't stay ready for that. I'm going to talk about this love just for a minute. I, I, I could never exhaust this one. I never. You, you just can't do it. It just is not possible. For God, the Bible says, so love the world. Where we find that at? John 16. See, I y'all come back with it? Because you've heard it all your life. Right? The word that is used there is the same word that's used here by the Apostle Paul. What type of love is it? Agape. See how quick y'all come back with that? Agape, in its, in its most basic, which is even greater than, than I'm going to say, is the God kind of love. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's look at this for a minute. Because see, see, we, we, we've got to get this or really we're wasting time in church. And I'm talking about an individual love. I'm talking about on an individual level. But here's, here's the problem on a corporate level. If, 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 I don't, if, if I'm strengthened by, by what every joint supplies, and I'm not supplying my love part, it's going to affect her. Right. If you go out there as calling yourself, again, quote unquote, a believer, disciple, a partner with LifePoint, and you go out there and you act ugly, you affect LifePoint. Amen. I'm getting ready to meddle. <laughs> I don't intend to meddle. I'm just being truthful. The truth really does hurt sometimes. Yes. Yeah, it does. And the reason why more people, but particularly Christians, I, I like to say sometimes Christians are marginally honest. But to be marginally honest is to be a liar. Right. Amen. Amen. But, truthfully speaking, if I withhold that which I know I'm supposed to do, I'm not going to categorize it because I could really meddle. I could really meddle by categorizing. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit pinpoint this one for you. Whatever I'm supposed to contribute and I don't affects the whole body. Yes, yes. it does. Come on. Take your time. Jesus... In being with the Father, I'm just there. In being with the Father, Jesus, and I'm going, I'm going to use what God gave me in imagination. Can I do that? If I get off scripturally, I'll just say, "Oh, no, no, no." Yeah, I'll say whatever you want to say. Okay. But Jesus is there before the foundation of the world, and He knows the heart. Of his father because he is a part of his father. 
The Bible says that there are three that bear record in heaven, and the three are one. Now, with them being one, it is not one necessarily in the physical sense as you and I would understand it, because the Godhead is actually God in three manifestations of personality and calling and assignment. Listen to me now. Because what happens is God the Father, He didn't create Jesus. <laughs> Jesus makes it clear, he says, before Abraham was, I am. And so because Jesus is God and Holy Spirit is God, God the Father has a responsibility and he has a desire to fulfill his own creation. I can't say it any better than that. The creation that he has a desire to fulfill is that he would have not just his son, in deity and, and, and authority, but a son or sons called mankind. Yeah. And in desiring to have mankind, both female kind and male kind of mankind, he and little 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 mankinds, right? And maybe little older mankinds, they're all mankind in the eyes of God. He has a desire that must be fulfilled, and until somebody sees the desire. And somebody has, a, has, has the uh, 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 ability to fulfill the desire. It is just that. It is still a desire. Yes. So what he does is he has, to, he has to set things in motion with his desire. Yes. And <laughs> what he does is he starts speaking. So what he does, he, 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 he looks in... To himself and sees Dave when Dave is not even a speck on the universal spectrum. He's not in existence. You aren't in existence. I'm not in existence. But he sees what he wants and he says to himself, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. When he speaks, John 1 says, John, the Gospel of John 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was, okay, you know this, and the word was, come on, say it like you know it. <laughs> and the word was God, so when God speaks, he speaks himself and puts himself outside of himself. And Jesus sees what the Father desires and he receives the word into himself as himself. You got to go with me spiritually. You're not going to be a guy. If you're, if you're down here, you're not going to get it this morning probably, okay? In doing that, in doing that, the plan is already set in motion because everything in the kingdom is voice. Come on, say it. If you're not saying nothing, you're not getting nothing. What do you need? Whatever you need, you're not getting unless you're saying it. If you need, if you need peace, you got to declare it. I'm talking to myself this morning. So he speaks, and in speaking, he now, listen, he now gives the permission for the whole plan to be manifest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what is what happens here is this. Now we pick up in Genesis, I'm fast forwarding a lot, but in Genesis we see the, 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 the beginnings of the seed. We've been talking about this all year long. We see the potential of the seed of the word of God showing up in, in, in what now becomes Adam or Adam, Ben Adam. Man and woman are created by God because it came out of God to do. Right. But there is also, just like you and I, there is also in existence in the universe, as it were. I'm just trying to keep it simple, okay? A a, a devourer. Yes. A, 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 a outlaw. Yes. And the outlaw is not known to, to God's man. 
Now, when I say men, I mean men and women, okay? Mankind, Adam and Eve, okay? Just for clarity, I'm not going to do it again. So, the outlaw is not known to God's man. So, when the outlaw shows up, and, and, and uh, it's interesting that he offers fruit. Don't let it slip by. He, he offers fruit to one half of the man, and that half of the man yields and pulls the other man into a, a pit of a, an abyss called sin that now they are enchanted and encased in sin and there is no way in the natural out of it. And they are held hostage and they are fearful, intimidated. They don't grow. They begin to die. Before that, there was no such thing as death in the realm of man. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> what has to happen? Well, don't get, don't think plan A, plan B. There's only one plan of God. The allowance of God for the outlaw to trick and deceive the man was necessary so that so that the entrance of all power could enter the realm of mankind and never be eradicated again. God help me. Glory to God. So, so if, 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 if sin does not happen, we don't know that existence because it just is already done. Come on now. We don't know what it looked like before. We will, but we don't now. Now, where am I going with this? Here's where I'm going. So now what happens is the seed of the word that was spoken, this is what Galatians talks about, has been now given an assignment of deliverance for the man. So Jesus, if you read over in Hebrews, the Bible says, it is written in the volume of God's book to, uh, Lo, it is written to me to do your will, O Lord, a body thou hast prepared. So what happens is now that seed is taken, stand up for me real quick, please. That seed is taken and placed, turn around so they can see, placed inside of a package, God help me, in the package of humanity because this is the only way humanity can be delivered of its own kind. Yes. Yes. And what happens is that seed of God begins to grow in Jesus and Jesus is all God and all man but he does not use his God ability because to use his God ability would be illegal until he has paid the sacrificial price for the sin. Listen to me well. You as a born again believer cannot take a shortcut to the kingdom. They don't exist. And they are not based in works. So Jesus doesn't take the shortcut. What he does is he follows the methodology as he listens to who? Holy Spirit, voice of the Father, and is empowered to make the necessary steps on a day by day by day by day by day basis. He doesn't take time off. Oh, God, help me not be legalistic here. <laughs> help me, Lord. Back to my original statement. Here's why I think, here's why, and, and listen, if you think I'm giving you a license to do something, you already have missed it anyway. Okay, I'm just telling you. Here's why I think that I'm not, I haven't done enough, I haven't prayed enough, I haven't been to church enough, I haven't given enough. Mm. I haven't uh, been sweet enough, whatever. I haven't been nice enough, okay? What you are seeing is you are seeing the effort of mankind, which is you and I, to try to, try to do things to win God's favor on our lives. Yeah. And it does not exist or work. You can never be pleasing to God. I want to run in this place this morning. You are the only way you can be pleasing to God is to submit to the will of the one who called you. Amen. He paid the price. You submit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. 
Y'all look at me like, I couldn't do that. You do it every day when you work for somebody else. Right? Yeah. You submitting? If you don't submit, you don't get paid. People that don't submit get fired. People that don't submit in the class, you're supposed to be in class, and you, you get a low grade, you get a D, an F, or, or incomplete. So, so, so what, why, what, why am I saying all this? Because we have come full circle. It is absolutely time for the fruit that has been given unto us by the power of Holy Spirit to begin to grow up in us and we start being God's kids. Yeah. <laughs> love. There's a song, uh, Kim Walker Smith sings, uh, Love Has a Name. <laughs> love is a person. Amen. Thank you for coming back. Love is a person. And I'm going to tell you something else. Love is you. Yes. You are love. You are the walking manifestation of love. Now, stay with me now. Don't get offended. Tell your neighbor, don't get offended. Don't get offended. Tell him he's not talking to you. He's talking to me. If you ever step outside of love, if you ever step outside of love, nothing in this life is going to work. Now, I say that with this understanding. It's hard to step outside of love. Yes. But it is not impossible. Let's go back to Jesus for a minute. How much time? Glory to God. Can I go back to Jesus for just a minute? Yeah, yeah. Jesus now comes to the place where he, he's, and we're getting ready to celebrate, you know, the Christmas season, what have you. He, he, he submits his, his godness, for lack of a better term, to, to, to a little embryonic, embryo seed stage. And he puts himself by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Didn't, well, it's not Joseph's son we're talking about. Mm. Mary was just the carrier. But it, it was a virgin birth. And so because it was pristine and, and it, was, it, was, it was very, very sacred, the scene is protected in the womb where it is extremely vulnerable because don't you think for one minute that they didn't have miscarriages back then? Don't you think for one minute that they didn't have the danger and hazards of life? But there was something unique about this seed that could not be touched because the word of God had surrounded it. And the angels had been given divine responsibility. If you think, yeah, we see the little manger scene and we see a few heart the herald angels sing, but there was the host of heaven that was on guard and moving throughout the earth talking to people, making sure that you were, they were in the right place at the right time, and if there was ever a time to hear the voice of God it was then, and I say to you it is now. Yes. Yes. And so Jesus begins and, <laughs> and he, he, he now comes out of the womb and his knowledge I want to ask him what he knew when he was laying there and looking up at them. When I see him, I'm going to ask him. Jesus, when they came up to you and they said that you were just a babe in swaddling clothes, what did you know? Mm, some of y'all like, okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. But, 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 but he is God in, inside an earth suit. And he has to allow the process of humanity to begin to grow because he is the seed of God. He is the lamb of God. And so as he begins to grow, he starts learning how to hear. He hears, he hears, he hears, and the more he hears, the more he does. And the more he does of what he hears, the more successful he is. Why is that concept so difficult for us in the earth? And so now he comes. He steps out. Fast forwarding. He steps out into the, 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 the river Jordan. 
and John is out there, John the Baptist, his cousin is out there preaching all with all this heart and energy and talking about him and talking about him, him being Jesus. And the next thing you know, he looks up and here he comes walking on the stage of the earth, on the whole universe, on display. He steps out and he says, he John says, and there is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And when Jesus shows up, he shows up and he allows himself to stand and be anointed or baptized, as it were, by John. And he now, the Bible lets us know there is an event that takes place that the manifestation of God in full, linen, color, God the Father speaks, God the Son is standing there and the Holy Ghost descends like a dove and we see God in the earth realm waiting for you and I to show up. That's how it happens. So what does he do? Turn with me. I think I got two more scriptures. Turn with me to uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, please. Matthew 7. Okay. Amen. Verse 15. Matthew 7, verse 15. Excuse me. If you haven't said amen, please. All right. I'm going to read this from the expanded Bible. Jesus is talking. And, 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 and my heading here says, people know you by your actions. Now, wait, wait, let me do this. i got to do this. i got to do it for all the Bible scholars, for all of you that... that, 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 that you know, the exegesis needs to be correct. I get it, and, and, and I understand it, so I'm going to make sure I make this point because I don't want anybody thinking that I don't know what I'm talking about. Because, see, the two words, the word fruit here is not the same as the word fruit that Paul used. To be clear. But could it be, could it be, could it be, could it just remotely, remotely be? Because we said that Paul was not there when Jesus was alive. Come on. So could it be that the Holy Spirit does not look at it the same way we look at it, the interpreters bring it down, but could it be that Jesus is saying to them, not just the word that defines their good, good works and behaviors, but it could it be that, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus is also talking about that which is to come? Just possible, just remotely possible, okay? I'm just saying, I just want to make sure I make that clear. So he says, be careful of... Or watch out for false prophets. Right. Verse 15. They come to you looking gentle like sheep. Come on. Huh? In sheep's clothing. But they are really dangerous like wolves. Inwardly they are ravenous, vicious, and ferocious wolves. He's talking about preachers. Come on somebody. You will know these people, verse 16, by what they do. Or your verse says by their fruit. Amen? He goes on to say, grapes don't come to you from thorn bushes. And figs don't come from thorny weed. Verse 17. In the same way, every good, healthy, sound tree produces good fruit. But a bad, rotten, and diseased tree produces bad fruit. Now back to Galatians for me as I close this thing up. You have to understand that if you have a, 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 a Christian. Can I just start there just for a minute? If you have a, uh, what's the next level? A believer. Hopefully we don't have any believers that, that, that fall into this. But if you have a disciple. If you have somebody that declares that they are, they are spiritually uh, Christ's kid and God's kid and they have no love they are a deceiver yes. and they are dangerous yes. they are poisonous and venomous yes. I remember growing up I grew up classical Pentecostals and I make, make no make, you know I make no apologies for that this is just what it was and there were people that came in and boy, they were dressed, as we would say back in the day, to the nines. <laughs> had big old wide brim hat on. Didn't want to sit behind him because you couldn't see around him. And they'd come in with a swagger and a sway because they had a particular seat. Maybe that pew had their name on it or maybe that chair was reserved for them. Be careful when chairs are reserved for you and all of a sudden the enemy allows somebody to sit in your chair and you, you, he just, the Lord just wants to see how you're going to treat that person because they're in your chair. And they, they, they would do things many times and you would catch them off guard because it was not about the fruit that, I mean God, it was not about the fruit that you 
you could see because on the outside they looked like they were walking in the grapefruit of love but on the inside is where it really counts baby it only counts when the pressure's on or when something that you're not expecting shows up in your life is love still going to come out your mouth come on yes. come on <laughs> hallelujah so I said I was going to, and I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Jesus does something that is so astounding to me. Absolutely astounding. I, 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 you know, when the Bible says that we grow up into Him, the full, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Yeah, you ever read that somewhere, right? When the Bible says, if I were to keep reading down in Galatians, I, you know, I will finish it. But the, but the Bible says in verse 25, I think it is, but don't turn there, that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. That's a profound statement. In other words, people that, 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 that do the, um, the self Flagellation, there's another word I was reaching for, thank you. Self-flagellation, self-mutilation <coughs> are in an attempt to crucify the flesh. You ever tried to crucify your flesh by starving it to death? You ever tried to crucify your flesh by, um, you know, I'm never going to watch TV again? You ever tried, you laugh, but people do it. Crucify your flesh because... Uh, Here's a good one. I, I'm not. I'm just saying. Y'all do whatever y'all want to say. Okay. I I love this gentleman, but I, but but he did this, and then everybody else tried to do it behind him, and then lives got messed up. Uh, burn every book except the Bible. Mm. Don't read any books other than the Bible. You try to do self crucifixion, and then you find you can't figure out why. You know. And there's people. There's people that I know. I could identify it for them, but they're not going. They're not going to receive it. So why, why tell somebody something they're not going to receive? It? Right. All you're going to do is make them mad. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. I, I know people that that because of the way, a certain way that they feel church must be done. They ain't coming nowhere around you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we in the other building. Before we left the other building. And I had uh, come downstairs, those of you who know what I'm talking about, they were there, and he was standing at the door. Both of them were, but he was the one talking. And he didn't know I was standing there. <clears throat> I'm always listening. It's my job. And uh, there was a person that came to the door. He was getting ready to come to the church. And he might remember when I started talking. But the bone on her head was so wrapped so tight that you could hear her squeak as she walked around. I mean, she had, I, I, I have not looked at anybody, I don't know what y'all wearing, what, how y'all, I ain't saying, so don't, don't go there, okay? Don't get into condemnation, I ain't talking about that. And, but the identity, just like I can spot, I can spot, I, you know, I can spot folks that grew up in Kojic. I'm about to spot you. And if you didn't grow up in Kojic, some of y'all say, what's that? If you don't know, you don't need to know. Anyway, thank God you don't know. I ain't hating on Kojic, I'm just saying. Uh, Church of God in Christ. Pentecost. Uh, but if you didn't grow up in Kojic, you grew up in some variation of it. If you if you Pentecost, you Pentecost. I can tell. I, it's in your walk, it's in your talk. You get happy. You might... You know, that's, <laughs> we, we, we got a classical uh, Apostle Roberts is a classical Pentecostal man. That my brother. That boy get happy in a minute, man. Won't he? Yeah. I ain't talking about he probably much. I ain't doing Apostle. Good to see you. Come on back home. We're waiting for you. Anyway. And that's okay. Because he knows what he's doing, why he's doing it. But, but my point, what was I saying? What was I going with? Yeah, I was talking about something. I was talking about, this sister walked to the door and this is what he said to her. He said, now this is God. This is, this is God. 
I knew it was God when I heard it. I was like, go, oh, boy. He told that woman before she, as she was coming to I'm going to tell you, this is a charismatic church. We believe in shouting. We believe in raising our hands. I'm just telling you, we don't just, he's not going to just talk from the King James Bible. I never heard her ask a question about all that. But he had spotted her and told her, you know what she did? She turned around and walked out. Come on, man. That's good. Yes. That's not bad. Come on. Yes. That helps her and us. Yes. Right? He just telling the truth. Because they don't need to come up here and she had a, a, a prune face and, a, and, and like she was sucked on 12 lemons or something. Because I'm reading the version of the Bible. I had a lady come to me and ask me. She said, do you teach out of anything other than the King James? King James, this is something I do. She turned around and left. She, you remember? She and husband turned around and left. We're looking for a church. And we just want to know if you teach from the King. I said, yeah, I teach from the King James, but it's not the only one I teach from. She turned around and left. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But my point in saying all of that is that what we, where we are now is that we have to recognize that Jesus looked at all of us. Let me have you come again. He looked at all of the problems and the mess in Dave Bell's life. Now let's take Dave's name off it and put your name on it. He looked at every time you were inconsistent. He looked at every time you said you would and you didn't. He looked at the trail of women you left behind you. He looked at the trail of men you left behind you. He looked at how many pins you stole from your employer. He looked at how many times you were clocking late. He looked at how much do dirty you had. He looked at all of what you were getting ready to deal with. And you weren't even born yet. And he said, prepare your body. I'll go. <laughs> That's love. Yeah. And love is rarely convenient. Yes. Amen. I have never known love to be convenient. Amen. I can go some deeper, but I, I, I got to go out of time. <laughs> Don't say you love me. Say you love him. I appreciate the gesture. The words are like honey to my ears. But when you turn around and disappoint me, it then makes me have to walk in a greater level of love concerning you. <laughs> I love you, honey. It's good in here. Sound good to y'all. Look good to your Oh, don't he love his wife? She hates it for me. Well, she'll hate it. She very highly dislikes and discourages me talking about her in church. Stop. And she don't say as much as you used to because she don't want to do it anyway. But if the only time I say it is when I'm around you, my God, somebody. The only time some of us act like we love them is when we are in the presence of other people. And God is always watching to see what's really on the inside of you and I. And he allows the heat of life and the, and the ups and downs and the vicissitudes of life to come against you to see whether or not love has a name in you. Yeah. Love has a name. Stand to your feet. I have to give your barrier a break. Defining day of the church age. Understanding day not in the context of a 24 hour time period, but rather a season of life. The defining day for you and I is right now. No matter your age, young or old, the youngest one in here might be my grandson, it might be somebody younger than him, Miles. But the youngest one in here from this point forward is moving towards eternity. Yeah. And you are moving towards eternity at a mind-boggling rate, whether you understand it or not, whether you believe it or not. Every decision, every choice that you make must be motivated by 
love. And until the fruit of love grows, that's why it's the, to me it's the first one in the list. Because nothing else matters. Nothing else. All of the peace, patience, long suffering, joy. None of it matters until love is firmly planted in your view, viewpoint. And it is not nine different fruits. Don't think it. It is not correct. If you've been taught it, it is wrong. It is one fruit with nine manifestations. Yes. Say amen. amen. So until love is here, joy is never coming. Because my love is not based on my feeling. I, don't, I, I stand before you today not feeling like it this morning. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like a believer. I don't feel like a Christian. I don't feel like a pastor. I don't feel like I'm anointed, but I know that I am. Because love yes. died for me. Yeah. I am crucified with him. God help me this morning. All of Tommy's inconsistencies and, and issues have been nailed to the cross. That's why he could say to the to the to the malefactor, this day you will be with me in paradise. It was illegal to do it, but he did it anyway. Y'all yeah. yeah. remember that? Standing there on the cross, preparing to fulfill the destiny of the Father. One on the right, one on the left, and the one says to him, he says, if you are the Son of God, get us off the cross. You can hear the attitude coming out of him. Christ had no response. But on the other side was somebody who loved, was showing up in and said, said, said I, I deserve to be here, but you don't. All I ask is that you remember me when you get to your kingdom. I don't ask you to save me. I don't ask you to make me. Just remember me that I was on the cross next to you. Some of us have forgotten that we have been nailed to the cross with Jesus. But he comes to remind us. And in that reminding, he says, this day you're going to be with me in paradise. It was illegal for him to do it because he's not yet ascended to the Father. But he also said in one place, I am the resurrection and the life. I can do what I want to do. Hallelujah. He chooses to love us. Especially when we're not very lovable. Would you get that in your imagery right now as I prepare to lead you in prayer? Think about the last time you weren't very lovable. I don't have to think long. Mine was just last night. I don't know how far back you gotta go. Don't be tripping like you gotta go back years. It ain't that far. <laughs> I'm not being critical. I don't know what you did, but you know. And it's not sinful. It's just you forgot who you are. And you can't go back and fix and repent to everybody that you did wrong. You might as well stop trying that too. You live the rest of your life doing that because there's always going to be somebody that you forget on that list. But your last lovable, least lovable time. When we get into this as we break down each fruit, each manifestation of the fruit, we're going to see that commitments are part of that, ladies and gentlemen. you breaking your word, breaking your commitments way too easy. I didn't get no amens from that, but love is not convenient. I told somebody, I won't say who it is if you know, that's fine. I told somebody, I, I, I witnessed something this morning when I came in earlier. I was here earlier and dropped my wife off. And, and in dropping her off, uh, I saw something that really, really hit home with me in terms of this message. And uh, I asked the person, I said, how far away do you live? You know, and you did that? And they said, yeah. And I recognized the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, love, Tommy, is rarely convenient. It's not convenient. A person at work that acts ugly, your husband, your wife, is tripping. You might have a husband right now. He might have lost his mind. Or your wife, she might have lost her mind, so to speak, bumped her head. That's the time you need to be walking in the greatest love. Because if you wanted to change, you're going to have to walk in love. Bible says love never fails. Why? Because love is Christ. He, he has a name. It has a name. So let's do this. Let's do this. I, I gotta let you go. Would you lift your hands? Come on, come on. Just
as I'm asking. Just as a sign of surrender. Just lift your hands. And how about you getting in your own mind and thought something that you know that you want to straighten out or fix or get right. I don't know what other kind of terminology I can use. You know what I'm saying? Lord, you see us? You see me right now. You see me, Tommy. You saw me. You saw every bad thing that I was that I've ever done, that I ever did, and that I ever will do. You already know it. You saw the things that I think are good, but you're not so pleased with. And you see the things that I've come short in. So what does it mean? Lord? It means that you know me better than I know myself. When you look at me. And you see things that are not pleasing in me. I ask that you forgive me. Forgive me for not living up to the expectations of you. Not of men. I'll never be able to do that. But forgive me for not being who you say I am. Forgive me for losing sight that love is who you are. Not what you do, but who you are. And in it being who you are, it will govern what I do. So I repent of not being very lovable. I repent of not honoring the God kind of love. And I say that I will do better. <laughs> with your help, with your empowerment, Holy Ghost, I can't do it without you. But I invite you to come help me be your son, the child that you want me to be. So as I approach my own eternity, I want it to be a time that I'm consciously aware that everybody on the planet matters. Whether they're born again or not, they matter. They matter to you. I won't be ugly. I won't be selfish. I won't be hard and touchy, insensitive. I will be who you have made me to be. And I can only do it by faith. So by faith I say, come on, say this with me. I am, I am God's child. God's child. I have repented I have repented of my sin. Of my, sin. my flesh my has been crucified. I, have been crucified. I now I walk, walk talk, talk, and live, and live in, love in love by faith. By faith. So, whenever so whenever I walk less than lovely, I, less than lovely, I say, Father, I say, point it out to me out to so me. I don't ignore it. So I don't ignore it. But show it to me, Holy Spirit, so, Holy Spirit. so I can grow. So and be better, and be better. at being, and being your, child. your child. Come on, give the Lord a hand to pray. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. He died for you. Come on, give him praise. Let the angels give you your praise. Let the angels give you your praise. Get tired of Jesus, I say right now, by the grace that has been given unto me, Lord, that your people are blessed. Lord, yes. I look around the room and I recognize the lives of those that have made the commitment to come today, and I call them believers based on the testimony as the shepherd of this house. If there's anybody in here today that feels guilty, they shouldn't feel guilty, but if they do, God, don't let them leave feeling guilty. Let them repent of their sin. 
or whatever's blocking them from seeing your love. Father, that's ultimately very important because as we leave this place, we don't leave your presence. And our angels have been assigned to protect our very lives. We speak life and protection and health and divine prosperity. God, we speak empowerment and deliverance in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of darkness in the name of Jesus and tell you that you must yield to the authority of God. We are, we are washed in the blood of Jesus, sealed with his promise. So let great confidence go with us today as we leave this place we give you praise in jesus name say amen and greet somebody